11, local first. Coming up on News 11, we look back at the devastating floods from Tropical Storm Lee last September. From rebuilding businesses and homes to neighbors lending a hand, we've got it all in this one year anniversary special. Also ahead, Lancaster County's Emergency Management Coordinator reflects on one of his most stressful days at work during that time period. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight on the Evening Report. I'm Peter Tarabarelli. On September 8, 2011, Lancaster County woke up to roads, homes, bridges and lives swept away by severe flooding caused by Tropical Storm Lee. We start off tonight with some of the sights and sounds from that devastating day. This is crazy. I've never seen it like this. This is the worst it's been since Agnes in 1972. Four o'clock this morning and it was actually receding and then that heavy rain hit us with two, three more inches of water. Conestoga River is under a flood warning. It is expected to crest over 22 feet tonight. Nothing short of an extraordinary set of meteorological circumstances uh, have really led to what's, what's going to amount to historic flooding in parts of Pennsylvania, uh, over 14, 15 inches in some locations. Lancaster County tallying eight inches in the last just a day and a half. We've never seen anything like this before. Very bad. Even the truck stop was flooded. Emergency and county officials are working overtime to keep residents safe. Just last night, people had to be evacuated from their homes. Now, most of those homes were in the southern end of town, and I'm told that the National Guard was brought in. The local Red Cross is doing its part to help victims as well. Twelve shelters have already been opened throughout yes, South Central anything. Pennsylvania. It's really unprecedented in so many ways. If there's any sort of good news about about this. It's that the rain is now ending. Those sights and sounds were just the start of what was a difficult and drawn out recovery period here in the county. But for the man in charge of handling those emergencies in this area, it was his most stressful time of work in 22 years. Randy Gottley, Lancaster County's emergency management coordinator, says last September's flooding was the most costly disaster in Lancaster County's scene in the time that he's been here. On that day last fall, areas in the county received anywhere between 6 to 15 inches of rain, causing the most severe flooding and since Hurricane Agnes struck it back in 1972. As the day progressed and more and more areas of the county were cut off by the flooding, uh, the responses by the emergency services became much more difficult. If I remember correctly, we had about 35 water rescues uh, that day and, and the uh, days that followed. Gockley says it was a very busy 48 hours for emergency responders, especially in the Ephrata, Mannheim and Mountjoy areas. He says they were even calling in helicopters from other parts of the state and Maryland to help with rescue efforts. While most of those rescue efforts were successful, in Lancaster County there were three people that were casualties of the flooding. In Penn Township, 53-year-old Mark Geib was trying to cross East Hernley Street when rushing water swept him away and rescue workers could not get to him in time. Over in Elizabeth Township, the car of 62-year-old Diane Barron of Lebanon was caught up in the fast-rising water along Route 322. It was swept into a local creek where emergency crews were unable to save her. And finally, in East Cocalico Township, 8-year-old Cole Troop was playing outside in his neighborhood went with other kids when he was sucked into a storm drain. Police arrived and tried to pull him out of the drain, but it was too late. As a result of the flooding events like that, PennDOT announced this week that a new state law has gone into effect, imposing stiffer penalties on those motorists who ignore road closed signs. Signed on July 5th by Governor Tom Corbett, the new law aims to keep drivers safe in areas where flooding and other hazards exist. If motorists drive around and through signs, closing down a roadway or highway, they will have two points added to their driving record and be fined up to $250. If the violation forces emergency responders to be called to the incident, the fine is immediately increased to $500 and the motorist can be liable for repaying the cost of an emergency response. Well, it was definitely hot and humid today in our area, no storms, but more like a typical day in August than in September. But all that may change tomorrow. For those details, let's turn it over to Carl Kern with the first look at the forecast. Hello, Carl. 
Well, Peter, fortunately, the weather a little different this year uh, coming into this time of year. But unfortunately, we're, we are looking at the chance for some rain, possibly even some significant thunderstorm activity heading into the day on Saturday. And we've even had you know, a few scattered showers out there this evening. I think the, uh, the western part of Lancaster County, the Elizabethtown area may have seen a shower earlier. But we do have a front pretty strong one moving this way. That's going to bring much cooler temperatures for the second half of the weekend. The faster this thing moves, the quicker it moves out of here. So we're going to have to keep an eye on it. The timing may change as we head into the weekend, but uh, much better weather by Sunday. I'll let you know what else is in store coming up in a few minutes, Peter. We'll be waiting for those details. Well, Mannheim suffered some of the county's worst flooding last year. With six feet of water running down some streets, many residents were left homeless. News 11's Catherine Clark recently visited the town and learned how they got back on their feet. Picture Mannheim today, and it's a far cry from what it looked like one year ago when the town was devastated by Tropical Storm Lee. The community wasted no time uniting against the disaster. Volunteer fire guys um, from our churches opening their doors, providing meals, uh, providing space for the families that were displaced to recover. Mayor Eric Phillips says Mannheim has bounced back quite well. Most of the damaged households and other local properties have been repaired. Emergency management continues to play a key role in assessing the town's condition. Today we're still working along with FEMA and, and, um, and, and Pima to um, work on the things that we need to repair. I would say we're about 99% complete. Just one year ago today, this street in Mannheim was completely underwater. And while the town has since recovered, they are still picking up some of the pieces. We have three families still displaced. So, you know, a whole year later, that's, that's rough. Perhaps the most difficult obstacle facing the town is the emotional pain that lingers. It's not just the structures. We can replace our, our, our goods. We can replace our houses. You know, um, you can't replace memories as much. But Mayor Phillips is confident in Mannheim's resilience. And with that, what they can do is continue to move forward. You know, focusing on the good, we're, we're doing good. For News 11, I'm Katherine Clark. Thank you, Catherine. Well, in effort, a victim still remember that fateful day in September when floodwaters engulfed parts of the town. Connie Hutchinson of James Avenue lost everything when her basement was submerged and two feet of water filled her living room. But she was one of the lucky ones. The hardest part was driving down the street and seeing the big orange condemned signs on the neighbor on some of my neighbors' homes. Fortunately, her foundation held up, and after a couple of complete renovation, she can now sit on her front porch and see how far her family's come. As I look around, I think, wow, the house is fine, we're good, uh, everything's been rebuilt. Why do those pictures still tear me up? But they do. James Avenue may be back to normal, but the memories from a year ago still remain. Well, coming up, we'll take a look at some of the businesses in our area and how they were impacted by the flooding, as well as what effects they are still feeling. Plus, we'll meet the face of recovery in Mannheim, how one woman responded to help friends, neighbors, and strangers when they called for help. It's taken a year for families and homeowners to pick up the pieces after last year's flood, but businesses and organizations in the community were also affected. News 11's Vita McHale was in downtown Ephrata earlier today to bring us the details. That's right, businesses were hit hard by Tropical Storm Lee. If you look behind me, you can see the Cocalico Creek. It's at a pretty low level today, but one year ago, it was a different story. This is what it looked like last year on September 8th. The creek flooded and spilled almost two feet of water into neighboring businesses. Modern cleaners had about $250,000 worth of damage. It's the same story across the street at the Ephrata Business Center, where water flooded into almost eight places. There's a room below us. It's about the size of this room and the room next door. It was completely full of water. There was a couple million gallons of water down there. It was actually blowing the air out through the cracks in the floor. 
He says it took about two months to clean up Free Geek Pen, and as a note, FEMA only provides assistance for homes, not businesses. That means companies took a huge monetary loss. One company, Woodware by Design, was even put out of business. In effort up for News 11, I'm Vita McHale. Unbelievable images. Thank you, Vita. Well, one organization jumped into helping residents in the Mannheim area. They took over the Mannheim Farm Show Complex and offered cartloads of relief supplies to those who hit worst by the floods. We were, in, we were in Mannheim earlier to talk to the president and creator of Love from Lancaster County. We were collecting items. We weren't sure if we were going to go back down to Alabama. We had already taken a trailer load of everything and anything down to Alabama. Then the flood happened here. And when I found out that Mannheim, the borough, decided to start collecting, I came in and said that I'd be more than happy to help. And help she did. In short order, mud and debris was cleaned out of the farm show complex and tables were set up. Each one was piled high with supplies, originally intended for others, now desperately needed here. There are quite a few that we just basically held and they sobbed. Um, it's, it's a devastating I think affect to someone to have just everything of yours taken away. Lancaster is a generous county, but when it comes to receiving aid, many let their pride get in the way. I remember the first couple days families coming in here, um, some didn't want to come in. Um, you know, they're not, they're very prideful. They don't want to take, they, they like to give. So it was really hard for a lot of families to come in here and take things. They were crying. And we told them, you know, get what you need today. If you need to come back tomorrow, you can come back tomorrow for the Eventually, the help was given out. Even now, Joelle says she's taken aback by the events of last September. Things happen so quickly that some things you didn't even really absorb all the way because it was just so fast paced, just trying to get all the things in. Knowing that you're doing what's right for somebody else, that's, you know, that, that's nothing's more precious than that. Well, emergency responders across the county say the flooding gave them a chance to reflect and see what they can be that what can be done better. At effort as Pioneer Fire Company, equipment purchased for water rescues was given quite the workout, making sure that swollen waterways didn't claim lives. This tested the firefighters' training and showed how their training was worth it. It was handled well, uh, we organized well, and we, we completed what we needed to do. We had the right equipment and the right training, the right uh, people to do the job that we need to get done. The maybe to get more prepared for the next time would be at the community level. The cleanup afterwards and stuff took some time to organize. We were not prepared for that sort of storm damage as a community. In the event that flooding like this was to occur again, the firemen effort in effort to believe that they are ready to tackle any situation. We'll stay with us. Carl Kern has your complete weather forecast coming up. Plus, we'll switch to local news where hundreds of helping hands worked hard across Lancaster County. Find out why ahead on News 11. But first, here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. News 11 weather with Carl Kern, local first. Another summer-like day here in early September, but those are few. Those are going to be very numbered, those summer-like days. I think we may have a little bit of summer left in us tomorrow morning, but with some real quick and very dynamic changes will come into the second half of the day on Saturday. And that could include some severe weather. So we're gonna have to stay alert for that into Saturday. And even this evening, we've had some very humid conditions. You may have uh, seen some, some pop-up showers out there. Uh, the sky very murky. Hey, look at what Adam Willier found. Uh, the hot air balloon tonight. I believe he was in New Holland. Cruising on through. Look at the haze. If you just see the lower portion of the, of the screen there, you see how, how the, the screen, even just the balloon, you can see it's the, the air is thick in moisture. Is that the, I'm not sure, I'm not a very good uh, agriculture guy here. Is that uh, tobacco there? What do we have? We're, we're growing something there. But the, 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 the rain will be uh, helpful for the crops again tomorrow. Unfortunately, it's going to come at a really bad time on the weekend, right in the middle of the, uh, the uh, enjoyable part of the day. Great shot, Adam. That was awesome to have that balloon kind of just sail on through there. Uh, just like this front is going to try to sail on through tomorrow afternoon. But unfortunately, again, it's one of those things. What's the timing going to be? It just doesn't look good. 
Uh, I mean, these things tend to slow down into the evening hours because you lose the energy of the sunshine. But once that sun picks up again tomorrow, this thing is going to be marching on through here into the afternoon, and it could bring a pretty good uh, a soaker. As I said, mentioned a little shower out there in the western part of the county tonight. And that's it. These things have been popping up and just disappearing as quickly. Not bad early, but not so great later in the day tomorrow with the 7783. We're at 77 right now. The dew point is 68, so we're not going much cooler than those upper 60s tonight. And still, everybody within about three or four degrees of uh, 80. So that's still pretty warm for this time of the evening. And again tomorrow, relatively warm day, noticeably cooler already. Detroit, Pittsburgh, Buffalo. That's where the cool air will be slipping in here overnight as that front continues to march eastward. So that front right into Pennsylvania tomorrow, 72 for a daytime high in Pittsburgh, 87 in Washington, D.C. Yeah, there's that front, and it's going to continue to push east during the afternoon hours. Anytime afternoon, you're going to see the chance for some really dark skies and some pretty hefty uh, rains, wind, thunder, lightning. And then as we get onto the back side of this front, cooler temperatures, drier air. Nice conditions, even for Sunday. Sunday looks pretty good. Even Saturday night, we could get ourselves into this air mass back here if this thing really just kind of keeps its uh, momentum and just kind of pushes right off the coast rather quickly, which it, it can do. So I don't always put a lot of faith in the timing of these uh, uh, future casts because there are a lot of things that can change as the day progresses on Saturday. Now, this has 5 p.m. I'm anticipating this thing is more on top of us and pushing through in the 5 p.m. hour, but still, this has us clearing out into Sunday morning, which I think we are going to uh, enjoy a little nicer weather into Sunday. Strong afternoon storms, and anytime afternoon, that is something that you should be aware of. And then look where the temperatures go into the lower 70s, lower 50s for overnight lows. That's some that's some good uh, open window weather there. Uh, get those, uh, turn those air conditioners off and uh, get the fans blowing in that fresh air, air that house out. Nice days coming up for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on right in the next week there, Peter. So a good looking set of days coming up. But uh, yes, unfortunately, you know, uh, well, these things are different this time th this year, Peter, than they were last year at this time. And yeah, it, it is quite a bit, uh, Quite a bit different for you, uh, different side of the uh, of the news story. But uh, fortunately, at least this year, we are uh, enjoying nicer weather. But do watch out. Some strong storms possible again on Saturday, Peter. Thank you, Carl. Well, 2,000 people are lending a hand over the next two days here in Lancaster County for the United Way's 21st Annual Day of Caring. There are over 100 products, uh, projects spread out through the county with 65 different organizations participating. Around 160 Valco Incorporated employees were busy in the New Holland and Ephrata areas this morning, painting fire hydrants, covering up graffiti on several local bridges, and cleaning debris from the Ephrata Rail Trail. This is an awesome place for uh, walking, jogging, what have you, and if we can make this a little bit better and we can provide some help with some other areas, that's what it's all about. This is the first year Valco employees have participated in the Day of Caring project. United Way officials say this annual event is also their kickoff for the 2012 United Way fundraising campaign. Well, if you didn't get the chance to make it out tonight to the Reamstown Community Day celebration, not to worry. News 11 was there and brought you, brings you now some of the sights and sounds from the festival. Take a look. This is Reamstown Days. It's been going on now for 37 years. And we do this every year, the, sec the first full weekend after Labor Day, here in the Memorial Park. Now, most of the uh, monies that we raise go to the park. Well, this is Friday night, and tonight we have a band starting from 7 o'clock to 9. We have all kinds of Pennsylvania Dutch food. The Lions Club, the East Cocalico Lions Club, help us out. Lions Club tonight is basically making um, French fries and um, ham sandwiches and clam patties. So it's usually something for everybody. Come out and have fun. Yeah, it looks good. Well, Jackie joins us next with sports. And Jackie, it's Friday, so that must mean football. That's right, Peter. Now the new look effort of Mounts got a chance to play in the front of their home crowd today at the War Memorial Field. So can the Mounts bring home their first win or will the Spartans spoil that homecoming? Find out next in sports.
Lots has been said about effort of football this season. Head coach Scott Shelley and a new regime building from the program from the ground up. And tonight, the Mounds finally have a chance to show the home fans some of the progress they made and maybe get a little home crowd advantage. Sparring running back Adam Haas showing off those fancy new garden spot helmets, but it's Efra's defense coming up big on fourth and goal. They stuffed the runner just short of the goal line. Nice stand by that unit. And the Mounts try to get something going on offense, throw over the middle, but it's picked off by Seth Rare. He sees daylight and he can smell the end zone, rumbles in, and the boys from New Holland take the 7 nothing lead. Later, Efra punts it to Austin Haas, but that might not be a wise decision. Haas running like a man possessed, refusing to go down, and somehow squeaks in for the touchdown. 14 to nothing, Garden Spot. They add a touchdown in the third quarter on the Mitch Martin lob pass to Michael Harrison, and that's a pretty play. Garden Spot wins this one, 21 to nothing. Football, though, isn't over yet. Brian Cass and I will have football highlights from all of our local teams in just a few minutes, as well as scores from throughout the LL League tonight. High school game night begins at 1030 right after the evening report. Switching gears to some boys soccer where the Lancaster Mennonite boys soccer team did not get off to the start and wanted, losing to Conestoga Valley. Now the Blazers are looking to get back on track. The reigning state champs welcoming Anvil Cleona this afternoon. First half, Blazers with the free kick, and it's a beauty from C.J. Sturgis, but wait one minute. Rev said it was an indirect free kick. No one touched it, so no go. Mennonite with most of the possession throughout the game. The deflected ball falls right to Zach Lehman. His shot goes right into the gut of the Dutchman keeper. Still scoreless. Finally, in the final minute of the first half, Victor Kallenstein in the corner of the low cross. Aaron Slanders gets a foot onto it and puts it into the back of the net. Blazers hold on to beat Angela Toyota 1-0. Switching gears to field hockey, Conestoga Valley taking a trip to the city to face McCaskey. The Lady Bucks off to a good start, 1-0 up when Carly Blance looks to be on a mission. Her first shot is saved, but she crosses it inside once again, finds sister Kendra. Kendra whacks it home, CV up two to nothing. Still in the first, CV continues on with the pressure. Kelly Martin breaks away, finds Carly, and this time Carly nabs the goal. Three, nothing, CV. Well, the Reading Phils not starting their road trip on the right foot tonight. The R Phils losing to Trenton 3-1 in game three. The Thunders now leading the series. Two, two, one. And that's it for sports. We'll be right back.